Hello, welcome to my channel. Here's a nice little drawing of a dolphin. It was done in colored pencil on sandpaper. Let's have a look. It's a smaller size drawing, about maybe nine times five inches, maybe less. And the pencils are Faber Castell Polychromos, as usual, and the surfaces are 1000 grit sandpaper. I picked this one, uh, which is kind of like a bluish grey color, uh, because uh, the background color is similar to some of the colors that I'm going to want to that I'm going to want to have in my drawing. But the sky is going to be uh, a lot lighter. The the water not so much. Just had to modify the shape of that fin a little bit and now the sketch is done and I can move on with the rest of the scene. I'm going to draw the line of the water and I want to make sure that it's straight and level so I use this ancient ruler probably many decades old and now I'm going to start drawing the sky and I'm going to start with a light ultramarine and then gradually make a transition to the uh, to the sky blue which is a little bit lighter and then add a bit of cool grey at the bottom so I want a nice gradient starting from a slightly darker blue at the top to cooler grayish color at the bottom near the horizon. But on this surface, even though it's a little bit faster to work than on regular paper, you still need to try to fill in uh, the tooth of the paper fairly thoroughly because the background color of the paper is uh, a bit darker than the color that I'm trying to achieve. So. I have to cover it very thoroughly and I I can use blending tools, I can use brushes and uh, other stuff but the problem is that um, this sometimes reveals a little bit too much of the background color as I spread the material around and I don't really want that if the background color is too different uh, than the target color. And in this, in this case it is, at least because of the amount of value. They're both kind of bluish, but my uh, the, the color of the sky needs to be a lot lighter. Now, in, in addition to these blues, I added a touch of light thalo blue as well to see if that uh, warmer blue will look good. Uh, but I was mostly happy with this combination of colors I used initially. So I mostly stuck with that combination uh, using the light ultramarine, ultramarine at the top and then a little bit more of the sky blue in the middle and near the bottom and of course at the very bottom I just went over the sky blue with a cool grey and it's important for it to be the cool grey because if I used a, a warmer grey it wouldn't really it wouldn't really look good because uh, the the blues that I used uh, at the bottom uh, at the top and in the middle are cool colors so I I needed a cool gray to go along with that and it did uh, I think it's relatively easy to make a nice smooth transition when going with lighter pencils on top of the darker ones <coughs> This surface allows you to layer the pencils, but it also allows you to draw fine details, small details, uh, even, if there are, even if those are lighter details on top of the darker surfaces. So that's one of the advantages of sandpaper or sanded surfaces in general because they're textured and they just hold uh, layers uh, a bit better than regular paper. And that's why I prefer using them with colored pencil. Not that you can't do this with uh, with regular paper, but I think 
this is just better and easier in my opinion so I'm starting to work on the dolphin and it's going to be grayish for the most part just uh, um, mostly shades of gray I suppose with a few different colors here and there but it's mostly grayish but I actually started with some black <clears throat> with some black for some of the darker areas and here and there I will have to add a touch of very bright colors I added a small highlight on the fin uh, on, the, on that dorsal fin because that's uh, some kind of a reflection because the, the dolphin's body is glistening so it's reflecting uh, some light in that area and there will be a few of these small reflections elsewhere as well so as I was experimenting and trying to decide which grays I would use I realized that uh, I don't really need to do much I can just use a black colored pencil and push it around with my blending tools like for example a totillion or a, uh, or um, or a brush or something and then that, that'll create nice transitions from the darker areas to the slightly lighter grayish areas but um, for the even lighter gray areas I had to add a little bit of light gray and I actually uh, experimented a little bit by trying uh, some cool grays as well as some warmer grays because in my reference there were also some warmer tones on the dolphin and by the way for the, for the reference I actually used a number of different photos and I, I kind of combined them into a single scene so that I could get uh, what I wanted because um, in some scenes there were two dolphins in others there was uh, one but I didn't like the position or the shape of the body that much and you know so I improvised a little bit. So that, there's that nice uh, reflection on the on the head area, and I kind of softened the edge a little bit with a tutillion so that it looks like an actual reflection, and not just a, a white dot or a speck on the dolphin's body. And now I think it looks like an actual reflection on a wet, smooth uh, dolphin's body. So like I said, I'm going to have a few of those reflections and I think they will add uh, not only to the um, uh, to the feeling like we're looking at a smooth uh, reflective surface but also to the volume, to the illusion of the volume of the animal because uh, this uh, head area is a round shape and it has that reflection and then it has some darker areas which are facing away from the light source so it's kind of like drawing a sphere except that this shape is obviously a lot more complex but the same rules and principles apply whether you're drawing simpler shapes or more complex ones so this fin uh, is a little bit lighter because the top part of it is facing up towards the light source and the other one is tucked in the shadow kind of facing away from the light source and you can see that I'm also going around the body with a sharp uh, sky blue pencil just to clean up the edges because I want a really clean edge between the main subject and the background that's really important because I, uh, I, I want to make it quite clear where the background begins and the, uh, where the main subject ends and the, where, where the back, uh, background begins so that I could explain to the viewer that these are two separate objects uh, I don't want to make any parts of it blurry just uh, shading the rest of the body adding some smaller details like for example around the nose area and the head area just uh, try to make sense out of that shape and trying to stay consistent with the light source and you can tell uh, the position of the light source from those reflections as well as the overall uh, amount of value in different parts of the body you can see that this top part of the body 
is facing the light source while the bottom or the belly area is facing away from the light source naturally. Um, anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to move on to the water and I'm going to draw some splashing water here. We're going to have some uh, foamy splashing effects and a couple of them here here in the foreground we're going to have another larger one like maybe uh, dolphin made a couple of uh, jumps or maybe there's another dolphin swimming next to this one it doesn't really matter but I just want a lot of splashing water in the background but the first thing I did I uh, kind of defined where the lighter areas the areas of that lighter value will be because I didn't want to work over those areas uh, I, I didn't want to uh, work over those areas with a darker pencil and then have to work with, uh, over on, on top of that with, uh, with a white colored pencil. So I want to have some lighter areas uh, where I move in with a, with a white, uh, with a white uh, pencil first to, uh, to minimize the muddying. Uh, like I said, on this surface you can add details, lighter details on top of the darker uh, darker areas, but there are limitations to that as well. So I don't want to push it. So for the uh, for the for the sea for the ocean whatever it is, I uh, I use the uh, darker blue color, the Prussian blue, I think it is, to establish uh, some darker values. And you can see how I. I kind of already made some suggestions of waves and then on top of that I added some light halo blue to add some um, suggestions of uh, lighter shapes or lighter waves because uh, the, the waves they have uh, their crests and troughs that that's what they're called and these uh, crests uh, they're going to be catching a bit more light from above so they're going to be lighter while the trough area is going to have a little bit of shadow so I want to have those shapes to kind of create that illusion of uh, waves but in order to make that believable I need to make sure that the ones in the foreground are larger and wider whereas the ones in the background are very small and getting smaller and smaller almost like small uh, very small marks and very short lines now here I'm starting to add some drops of water, some splashing effects. And you can see that I'm able to put in these uh, lighter marks on top of the darker areas. But like I said, uh, there are limitations to that. Sometimes they show up a little bit better, sometimes not so much. So you can't really force it. You just have to work with what the drawing gives you. But so far, I'm pretty happy uh, with the amount of contrast I'm able to achieve here. And the thing is, to achieve a realistic looking spl splashing effect, I have to draw a ton of these uh, droplets. And uh, that is very time consuming, so I'm not going to draw every single one, but a few suggestions here and there will probably do the trick. Uh, they will probably be enough to convey to the viewer uh, the general idea that this is uh, splashing water, that the dolphin is jumping out of the water and creating some waves and some foamy water uh, around that place. And I want to make it look like so, uh, some of the, those ripples are kind of um, moving on onto the the other waves around it and causing causing other waves and splashes around the around the place where the dolphin jumped now you can kind of overdo it with this if you try too hard but it, it's kind of better to keep it simple and just add a few suggestions here and there now in some places like I said I do have to add quite a few of these small dots but uh, I don't really have to stick to the reference and I don't really have to make it look exactly the same so that it would look realistic. It, it can still look pretty realistic without me having to 
draw every signal detail. So here I'm trying to create a little bit of a variation in that foamy water, uh, just uh, trying to make it look like it's not completely uh, white, like there's uh, a little bit of uh, some of these darker areas where we can see a little bit more of the water coming through the uh, through that uh, splashing foamy bits and again I don't really need to draw every single detail detail there just a few suggestions will probably do the trick so drawing is almost done I'm just kind of cleaning up some of the edges and adding some finishing touches I'm adding a slightly darker black colored pencil. This is a you know silky black pencil, which is a little bit darker than the Faber Castell one. So I decided to go over some of the dark areas with it, just to add a bit more uh, range of value to the drawing. And the drawing is done. Uh, my signature is going to go here in the lower left corner, and that's it. I want to thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe and give me a like and comment, and for longer videos and more content, you should check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching, bye.